All right. All right. So here we go. Um, yay. Uh, Saturday morning, and I am back at my computer doing some recreational coding and um, just basically having a little bit of fun. And so today I'm going to continue my exploration of. Uh, um, my exploration of um, smart contracts, testing, um, building uh, applications, and uh, hopefully learn something new in the process. Who knows? Uh, I'll be around for uh, an hour and a half at least. Last time I said that, that I ended up doing, uh, I think, a three hour uh, stream. So you never know what's going to happen uh, right so uh, I'm kind of um, uh, in the middle of a series of streams or like refresher sessions for me uh, to figure out things around testing uh, so I have a few notes here somewhere there we go right uh, to go over some stuff so what I did is like this is not nothing prepared but when I started this these sessions I didn't have a real plan in any way which you know I just I was just trying to to improvise a little bit so I started this slide deck just so I could take notes uh, whether taking notes in, in as a in a slide deck is, is a good idea <clears throat> that is of course up up for debate but that's the way uh, I, I did it and so uh, so the general idea here is to is to try to build robust uh, software by implementing automated tests in the entire process of the on the flow of, of, of developing uh, developing features and applications right so, and why well because that leads to better better uh, better quality better quality code fewer bugs uh, easier focus in my opinion um, because you stay kind of in scope you are focused on one specific test case at a time uh, and so on so so my take on automated tests in software in the craft of creating software it sounds so cool in a way um, is is that it, it's it's a good thing it's a good practice it could be very tedious and, and it could be very frustrating but I think in my not so humble opinion I guess uh, uh, your ability to actually overcome that and test and do things is what separates us from separates professionals from from you know I don't know hackers or just hobby so software developers and so on and it's okay to be a hobby developer I think that's that's uh, perfectly fine but if you want to do this professionally in my again not so humble opinion uh, one would want to strive for good quality across the board in, in, in all kind of aspects of the of the craft of the of the process so that's why I focus a lot on on uh, testing, and in a way that kind of helps me in learning new new things as well. Like for instance, the thing that I will be covering this in this stream, uh, which is the smart contracts and uh, uh, and um, solidity. Uh, hello Anya, nice to have you uh, with us. Good morning. I hope I didn't uh, got you up from from uh, from bed uh, on this wonderful Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's continue. So Anya, just so you know, if you want, you can join in by by uh, uh, by audio if you want to say hi. Uh, oh, you woke up at 6 a.m. Oh, that's good. Uh, um, that's that's pos totally possible. I have a Google uh, Meet open. I usually have that in my streams because I have some some uh, 
uh, some friends joining in sometimes that wanna wanna chat. Uh, so just let me know if if um, you know it's easier to ask questions in audio uh, rather than just chat. But that's totally up to if you want that. I will send you a link over uh, discourse. I guess I can get you a private message or whatever. Uh, right. So anyway, uh, I was just saying that which is giving a little bit of a background on why testing is important for me personally in terms of, of uh, quality in you know the craft or the, the process of uh, developer the developing um, developing software so uh, let's see um, and and so so I was also go mentioning that it, it helps me learn new stuff and, and that's where we are kind of today because uh, when I started this thing I wanted to go over various types of or kinds of tests uh, and focus on JavaScript mainly, right? So uh, I started out, I did one stream on unit tests um, which was just Mocha and Chai basically trying or, to, you know, setting up a flow of, of, of unit testing in, in those using those um, those tools. I'm not going to cover much about Mocha and Chai, what it is today. We will use them, but not perhaps not to talk about the background. Then I did another stream on acceptance tests, which is a different type of tests because they are more testing the overall functionality of our application rather than uh, diving into the internals and how things are done. Um, uh, acceptance tests are more around or, or circulate around the concept of what is the outcome of a user actually interacting with the application. And then I also did another session for another type of acceptance test that tests uh, only only API functionality. Uh, so that's a different uh, approach altogether. And then I was supposed to go into React and component tests, but then I came up with this fantastic idea. I already spoke about this at length last week that I thought that why would... Hey! Good morning! Puss, puss! That's what you do. That's good. That was my son. Um, right, so... so uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, yeah, so I woke up last Saturday and thought, or was it the Saturday before? I can't remember. And I said, oh, let's let's learn about smart contracts and and do it in a test-driven way. And that is actually the the, the point that I want to make come across. That if you focus on on actually writing automated tests, it helps uh, helps in 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 learning. It it might seem like a that sound like a stretch, but it actually does because you slow the pace down. You don't hack away. Uh, you actually focus on one thing at a time, and it's uh, 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 it's it and it's it's a good good thing. So I will send that link here, but also in 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 uh, uh, in this course. Right there we go. Uh, let's see if you can. If it's gonna fly or not. This should be. I mean, if you. you I. I. Uh, I think. Are you? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Hello, Anya. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Cool. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and I think the audience can hear you too. I, after a long uh, session, at one, like a few weeks ago, I managed to set up so that my desktop sound is actually streamed out. That involved a lot of tweaking and some software on my Mac, but it did work after a while. So I think we should be good. Um, how are you doing this morning? Wait a minute. Yeah, um, I'm doing great. Um, yeah, just had a little walk and... Uh, did a few things already and uh, was just very excited about watching you on oh, stream today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mighty impressed that you actually get up at 6 a.m. On, on, on a weekend. Um, so that's 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 unusual. But I guess uh, 
I, I think it, it depends. Uh, that's not always uh, the case, but at the moment, um, it feels like I have a very good sleep rhythm. Um, so I still have my seven, eight hours of sleep a night. And so I just get to bed early and cool. I get up at six. Cool. I wake up. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, as you saw, I have a seven year old and he wakes me up pretty early. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but I, um, um, uh, I, I usually get up pretty early. So I was, I was up at six as well uh, before that, because that's my only time where I can get a cup of coffee by myself and then do a little bit of coding or, or just checking emails and you know or reading the news and stuff like that so early exactly. morning is, is nice <laughs> absolutely right so finally testing uh yeah so as you as you understand uh, i am very much uh, into into a writing automated tests for many different reasons and i i i don't know uh, when you when you join but f for me you know the ability to actually uh, write tests or implement testing into into the workflow is is what kind of separates us from being like professional versus hobby programmers. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is, in in my opinion, there is nothing uh, contradictory there. Uh, it's it's cool to be a hobby programmer. I, I've been one myself. But you know, if I want to work uh, in a professional setting, then I think it's very important to think about quality across the board in all all different. You know levels that involve you know that are involved in, in 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 creating software, and code quality is one of course, right? So I, I think that that that's that's why testing is so important. But it also helps me in in focus and scope, and also as I mentioned in in, in learning. So which is you know this smart contract journey is is a good example of that because a few weeks ago i didn't know shit about it and now i know more you know but i'm not an expert yet yeah mm -hmm. what what are your experience with automated tests i know i've seen that you 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 you've been uh, you've been at it and you've been working at it and we we discussed uh, testing uh, in chat a few times but w what are you take what are your your experience so far yeah, I, I don't know much about it uh, yet, uh, but I guess what I've been doing is unit tests, uh, just because they seem to be what uh, what the Solidity language kind of, uh, what's best like to test uh, smart contracts at the moment, at least in Solidity. And uh, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I'm, I'm super beginner in everything, but I guess my experience is just, um, it's not it doesn't seem that complicated in terms of uh how you do them i think the 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 complex part is to to think about like all the the use cases that you should be testing and uh i guess that forces you a little bit to go top down again rather than just uh bottom up when you try to to program a component in in your uh in your code yeah so 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 i totally agree now the, the 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 concept of as you know the concept of contracts and and dApps or distributed apps is new to me uh so so and i totally agree that if you if you focus on contracts first uh w w which i did you know because uh, i don't know if you followed any of my streams but i you know i i started to to learn solidity by by creating a, a very simple you know greeting contract first and then some sort of a token contract and now I'm, I'm, I'm working on, a, on another concept uh, and and that is that is of course unit testing uh, heavy right so so mm -hmm. create the contract interact with it somehow like you know uh, initiate a, a function or sign something and and then assert that the the, the result is is what it what it should be mm -hmm. but when I think about it, it's like if you if you want to because that, okay so so the next step would be to to kind of implement this contract in some sort of a of an application right like a you know like you you started to build uh, um, an interface in Vue the other day right I think it was yesterday yeah. yeah and I'm doing React okay but but so when you implement when you build an interface around that then you probably want to move higher up you know if you think about mm -hmm. this. This, this circle that I, I use here, the, the outer layer is, is the acceptance test, is the, is the you know, the, the tests that are simulating the interaction between 
a user, a potential user, and the application itself, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and the and the unit tests are would be the the tests of the contract itself, where how the contract mm-hmm. behaves. But but the acceptance test would be how the contract behaves in a context when a actual user actually uses it. If that mm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. So is so accept. I, I mean, I've seen in your list that you've also uh, used Cypress uh, mm-hmm. for acceptance tests, and mm-hmm. then it makes a little bit uh, more sense to me because Axdev had also talked about Cypress, and he was talking in about it in the context of the the front end. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so okay. Yeah, so that, that's that's test. totally totally right. So so the yeah. the the outer layer and or the outer circle that I have here on this slide, uh, if you look at it, that that, that would be Cypress, you know. And then the mm. in, inner layer would be, uh, for instance, Mocha and Chai, right? Um, mm-hmm. And and of course the outer layer doesn't have to be Cypress. It could be uh, it could be Mocha together with uh, uh, Selenium, for instance, or or the, I mean there are mother, many other techniques. I I happen to think that Cypress is the best tool around at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. When it arrived, uh, I think it was a year and a half, two years ago, when it started to become popular. It was mm-hmm. a breakthrough in in acceptance testing of of uh, JavaScript applications because up until then, uh, you know Selenium. Uh, Jasmine or Karma, all those runners, they were they were pretty shitty. They weren't good uh, to to work with. A lot of configuration, very heavy uh, on the syntax and so on. So and then came Cypress, and it was it was a breeze in comparison. Mm-hmm. Right, it's it's very easy to set it up and, and actually use it. Mm-hmm. And and um, so for me, Cypress has been a it's been a revolutionary thing uh, in terms of of testing uh, uh, applications, like you know front-end apps um, and and but the, the thing is that when I started to look at the at the uh, the, uh, the the contracts I I kind of started in a in a place that is contradictive to what I usually do because um, I started on the unit unit uh, uh, level as I said I started to learn about the the, mm. the the contracts you know and and I usually work outside in I, I try to when, when I when I uh, approach a new, um, uh, you know, a new application, I always think about the user experience first. What will the user see? How how will they mm-hmm. uh, experience it? What what is the outcome? You know, what sort of a problem are we solving? And we th- I think less about the the inner workings of the application, but rather about the UX, the user experience, right? And therefore, we start with the acceptance tests, and then so just uh, yeah. just a question. So is is that uh, is that best practice, or um, or would, or is it just a matter of preference? Uh, um, I mean, to me, intuitively, it sounds like it would be best practice, but it is. So, so it it, it, it it depends, of course, who you ask, right? But I would mm. say that that uh, the behavior-driven design approach (BDD), as the, as we t- you know call it, is um, is is a practice that is practiced by a, quite a quite a few people uh, and, and a lot of developers but it's it is you know it, it brings us to another discussion Anya but because you know the, the industry is full of guys that are uh, are engineers right and they love mm-hmm. units you know they love the mm-hmm. inner workings of the of the application of the of any mm-hmm. system because mm-hmm. that's what they you know went to school for they trained for you know and 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 it's 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 cooler to talk about specifications uh, you know of how mm-hmm. things are done and performance and language choices and all of that than this soft softer kind of you know uh, uh, sk- th- parts of the application like yeah like ux because ux is 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 about the user you know and the experience mm-hmm. and not not so mm-hmm. so tech heavy so if you look at at over engineered ab- applications they are usually uh, you know, not built in a BDD kind of way. They are, mm-hmm. they are, they are focusing on. I mean, they, 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 you know, they are built by people that focused on on units first, and then use that technology to to you know put together some sort of an application. And I think that's a that's that's a bad practice. I think mm-hmm. that we should always focus on the user, 
right? But in, in our case, because we were just uh, learning about solidity, I think it does make sense, right? Because we do want to know what we can even do with solidity exactly. before. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So okay. that's, that was my, the point, right? That's why I started with the, with the contract, you know, just scratching my head. What, what is this? But, you know, yeah. and, and then you start experimenting, building a simple contract, then a little more complex contract and so on, right? And then you, you kind of learn and then you put it into a context but I, my point is that when we know this you know with a mm -hmm. with a, with a good yeah. uh, good experience or good good knowledge one should mm -hmm. flip this 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 process you know mm -hmm. yeah. so good well if that makes sense that's awesome um mm -hmm. now my problem is that uh, what I struggled with, well, first of all, I, I wanted to have a, a real case, right? So, so that's why I came up with this this idea of a, you know, purchase kind of contract where there are some stakeholders and so on. So, because I wanted to to go beyond uh, hello world or greeting mm -hmm. contracts, and and so so I, I kind of started that, and and then there was a, a problem for me choosing um, a stack or or a development. Uh, um environment right so mm -hmm. so because as as a new newbie on this on this topic i was like okay mm -hmm. so uh, what do i do right i i knew that solidity was the was the 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 i i the framework i would call it because it's 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 not a programming language right it's it's or is it i don't even know how to, what to call it um uh to be honest but but yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure but i think they call it uh I, I think they call it the language i think but uh yeah yeah but it's built on javascript right is it isn't it um yeah i, I I'm, I'm too like i'm too beginner to really understand how programming languages are even built <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask but yeah possible uh, i mean i know that you use the node.js uh, stack for yeah uh yeah so yeah definitely. Uh, they call it a language. They call it an object-oriented high-level language for implementing smart contracts. So mm -hmm. that clears up that question. So it's a language. Mm -hmm. However, I've uh, I've noticed that I can run regular JavaScript in it. So so it must be built on as as, as you say on Node.js or something like. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So Subsidian says it's a language. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Nice to see you, Subsidian. You were the uh, our, the the hero of last week's. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. last week's stream so that's that's cool uh, so uh, and by the way subsidian if you want to join the audio the, feel free to just let me know and you know um, you can you can get that link uh, so so then then my next my next problem was um, let's see uh, yeah so I I uh, I use hard hat right and hard hat is some a sort of um, no that's not that that's not the right hard hat sorry uh, that's the one so it's it's a development environment and, and but you were using uh, truffle right or yes mm -hmm. right and so the question for me was what's the difference between truffle and hard hat and it's just mm -hmm. a different uh, it's a different environment probably right um, and uh, what made things a bit confusing is that hard hat comes with uh, their own implementation of waffle and waffle uh, is is the testing uh, framework uh, uh, let's see right let's see yeah right mm -hmm. uh, a tool for testing smart contracts right uh, and I assume that you're using that as well, aren't you? Uh, no, uh, I don't know about Waffle, actually. Okay. I, I, I guess I used uh, Truffle and Ganache. I'm not sure uh, what Waffle is, the most advanced framework. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ganache testing. Let's but it, it, it's probably, I guess the thing is, since I'm such a, a newbie de developer, even in the first place, mm -hmm. um, I... I tried to at least stick to the stack that seemed to be there for a bit longer so that I have a bit more like tutorials or whatever yeah. that could help me out just in case. Yeah. Uh, but G Ganache is a bit different. It's like a one one click blockchain or like a like a local uh, blockchain that you have on your 
running so that you can do development. I don't know if that's Waffle or Hard Hat. That, that would or... be Hard Hat, I guess. That okay. Would be, that would be Hard Hat ah, in this case. Okay. Right. And and then I have uh, I have this 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 so so I so waffle so <laughs> that's the confusion right and and you know that touches upon a point because it's it's hard to get into this kind of development in my opinion you know there is no clear path you can choose this this set of tools or yeah. this set of tools and and you know yeah. that that was a bit a bit confusing for me at least mm, yeah right so 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 waffle is built on top of mocha. And it uses chai, um, mm. chai uh, as, as, um, um, matchers, right? Chai, chai matchers. So that's it why has, why I kind of it has definitely you know. very good uh, projects. I'm just seeing, you know, used by Uniswap, Cosmos, Aave. Those are very good projects. So maybe it's a good one to go with. Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, that's that's uh, that that remains to be seen, I guess. But but mm -hmm. it feels rather straightforward. <sighs> but you know, I, I, well, 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 I again, I'm 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 beginning. I'm a beginner on this as well. But let me just pull this this code up so we can I, we can have a chat mm -hmm. uh, because I would like to hear your uh, your opinion on that as well. Let's see. So let's see. Ls. Uh, work testing workshops like right? so, testing workshops and then basic contracts smart contract right there we go uh, code uh, so this is the the code that we struggled with last last week uh, let's see if can I can. I, so you are on on which environment uh, so 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 this one is this one is uh, uh, is using hard hat Solidity 084. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then and that's that's it basically, you know, because the, the hot hat comes with with waffle pre pre uh, pre configured. Uh, I just have an an additional question because I was struggling a lot yesterday. Uh, uh, are you on Linux or are you on? Oh, I am on a, on a Mac on a uh, 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 OS, on a X, Mac. OS okay. X computer. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm I'm running into issues uh, because I'm on Windows and using uh, an Ubuntu app. So yesterday we just decided that I'll I'll just go for a virtual box because I I'm having trouble community communicating with the um the test blockchain. You know. Like oh really? Very, yeah, it's it's a huge pain uh, from the beginning, and I'm not the only one to have the that problem. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, so, so without, uh, um, so Sujung suggested you could use a VSL. Right. So, so my experience with virtual uh, I've boxes. I've used VSL, but I'm having problem with it because yeah, uh, it's it's not as easy and all round round work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so my, my experience with virtual machines altogether is that that it they are quite heavy on the processors, you know, and and I don't know, um, and this is totally beside the point, but I don't know how your streaming setup is is configured, but I think mm -hmm. that if you use one computer and you want to stream, and you mm -hmm. want to use a virtual machine on top of your Windows machine, ah. that could be a big problem for you. Uh, okay. Uh, it could be well. It could be fr from a streaming perspective. You understand? Like it. It could be. Yeah. 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 So, so, so for instance, like at at work, I have a setup where I have a a, a PC that I connect my Mac to, and the PC mm -hmm. is streaming, right? So I offload all the 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 um, the performance issues, you know, or you know, per per performance heavy tasks to the PC, mm -hmm. and I can focus on programming. Here at yeah. home, where I am at the moment. I am streaming from my MacBook Pro and doing programming, right? And mm. so if you look at, at uh, on my screen now, well, I guess you can't see that because of the chat. Uh, so let me just turn off the chat for a second. Uh, and if you look at, you look here, um, my memory is down to 731 megabytes, right? On a 16 gigabyte system. So as I stream progressively, uh, Streamlabs OBS and the, you know the streaming software is eating up my memory. You know, you understand. Mm. And so mm. I was doing some um, some React Native development and push, you know, compiling code in Xcode, really pretty heavy uh, 
uh, mm, pretty heavy yeah. processors. And then I was, I was like, oh, why is it so slow? And I checked the performance. I was down to 16 megabyte internal memory. Do you understand? Mm. And I was like, it's like moving with a East German Trabant or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. that's that's not gonna fly at all. No. Um, so 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 I just I'm just saying that that you should be. You know, you have to consider all aspects of the whole yeah. thing. If you, because mm -hmm. I know that you are you are doing streaming, so you have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but if we if we go back to this one, so so hard hat comes with a lot of presets, uh, uh, s which I kind of liked in um, when I started out because because I didn't have to worry about configuration too much. Uh, you know the artifacts and the contracts are stored in a spe in a <clears throat> in a predefined uh, spot. I don't have to work with migrations per se, and so on. So so it was a, in my opinion, a fairly fairly fast, you know, way into working with with uh, you know, and actually creating some some functionality. Uh, and when I looked at the others, there was more conf configuration. I always say that configuration is not programming. You know, mm. I like mm -hmm. to program. I don't like to configure shit. So, you know. I, I agree. I mean, I'm, I, I've had actually that's I think that's an issue that I'm having at the moment because uh, I did manage to like, for instance, make it work with Ganache and to run tests. And I could see that it was using Ether from Ganache, mm -hmm. but somehow I can't access the information from Ganache, what, what I see there. And also I, I did manage to connect my MetaMask to this uh, Test Ganache um, blockchain, you know. To the, to the, to, uh, but 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 that, is that in test environment or when you spin it up locally? Uh, no, no. I, I yeah, I had a Docker uh, image running that has uh, Ganache uh, blockchain. Okay. Sort of. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, th that's unfortunately nothing I know much about yet. Mm. Uh, so that's. But yeah. It's good to know that Waffle may be like uh, Waffle and Hard Hat may be just uh, a bit further in terms of also configurations mm -hmm. and stuff because I had I think more things to enter. Mm -hmm. So so one thing that I, I so you know what I like about this setup at least is I have a so I have this purchase uh, contract which uh, you know is is a very simple so far. Um, contract about this this relationship between a buyer and a seller right mm -hmm. uh, and then i have a consequent purchase test js right so uh so that's 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 how i do it and and uh in terms of setup there is a, a quite a bit of documentation on uh, the hard hat website and you know they have like when you you can spin up uh, um, you know like a hello world application or a greeting application and then th there is a test included in that uh, but that didn't really work out for me so I actually had to put down uh, put in a little bit of work to 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 get things under control um, in my test environment but after uh, a little bit of blood sweat and tears uh, not mm -hmm. overly much but a, a bit I've been, I've been through worse uh, I came up with this solution where I basically, uh, you know, make sure to import chai. I I make sure to import import waffle uh, from from hard hat, um, which is the 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 test uh, t like the the utilities for for dealing with contracts in 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 test environment. And then in this case, I I just import the purchase contract from the one that is already compiled right so i go to source artifacts and then uh, i import this purchase json um, which which is compiled every time i start my my test uh, or every time i run my tests ah okay yeah mm -hmm. so that's that and th in my opinion that's pretty minimal setup if you know mm -hmm. so um, i i was uh, i was quite happy when when i when i uh, got that and sipsadion approved to what to the ec2 instance uh let's see thank you for the follow by the way um uh, so, right. so yeah it looks it looks similar to what uh what we have set up in or like what i got inspired from a tutorial um with with uh chai and yeah we have abis i guess yeah uh, with truffle right uh yeah that's uh, that's actually something that i'm looking into why if i could could access those ABIs somehow somehow in Waffle as well, 
because mm. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really. I, I think I need them um, in some more advanced testing, but I, I haven't gotten that mm -hmm. far, you know. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but so so but but since since I'm interacting in my in my use case, I'm interacting with different accounts. So that's that I, I just create here on line seven. I just create a, a service provider wallet, a buyer wallet, and then a you know a random guy that is is out of you know is not supposed to to have <laughs> access to the to the to the to the a thief. <laughs> yeah, a thief. Right. Exactly. So 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 waffle provides me with a provider, right? And and that it spins up. I think it's twenty wallets um, in. Um, in test environment so i can just grab the first three like i do here and this is javascript so it's, it's i'm using a destruct uh, function here to get those wallets and and store them in those in those constants right and then i have a before block where i create the subject of the entire test case right which is the contract that i want mm -hmm. to to test and so i it's an asynchronous function and i have this deploy contract uh, function uh, bound to the in those to waffle which is the utilities and um, we struggled a little bit with that subsidian and I but we've managed to to figure out again the documentation sucked big time I gotta say yeah, yeah. oh my god I'm happy to hear you say that because I had so much pain yeah I was so happy when I finished the tests and I mean they were even inspired from a tutorial but I decided to go for the latest version of truffle and of solidity and all of this and and only that was already big trouble because I, I just wasn't able to figure out how I even get to the information coming from the smart contract. I know, I know, and and and, oh. and, and it it you know, so so you remember I mentioned that before Cypress Cypress came around, testing in 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 JavaScript applications was hard. That was exactly I I got that feeling when I started to do this, you know, <laughs> because I was like, why do they? Why can't somebody just write a, a comprehensive guide? do this, this and that, and you will get yeah. this and that outcome, you know. Um, I just have a, a little side note and, and question because, um, yeah, you, you're very experienced and I'm just uh, starting uh, with my dev journey. But basically, uh, I was thinking about that. I decided to go for Solidity because I was under the impression that it's like the older, the oldest, you know, blockchain and, and language uh, to, to code smart contracts. Uh, but ultimately, in my personal opinion, I don't really care uh, if it's Solidity and Ethereum or anything else. I, I, I guess it depends on the project and it depends how good the blockchain is, etc. Um, I have heard from uh, other devs that uh, other blockchains now, such as Cardano or Flow, are much, much easier to handle in terms of smart contracts. Um, I was just wondering, is it like lost time that I like put so much hard work? Okay. <laughs> work in your opinion in solidity or? <laughs> so that's a, that's a fantastic question. Uh, that's 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 actually a very relevant question, and it uh, it speaks highly of you that you ask it, um, because you know people are often like tech technology focused, right? I need to to do this. Uh, my mm -hmm. answer to your question is no, it is not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, but let me elaborate on that a little bit because. Uh, for me, everything that touches upon, you know, progr on, on programming or, or developing software, whether it's, it's, you know, blockchain technology or web apps or uh, APIs or whatever, it's all about the concepts, in my opinion, right? You have to think about things, what you want to achieve and why you want to achieve them, right? You know, use cases and real life implica implementation. And then you implement those functions with a programming language, with a, with a uh, framework, using a specific stack and so on. And then let's say that that stack gets obsolete, deprecated, you know, life goes on, the change is the only constant and after a while nobody uses that anymore. And, and But if you have thought about things in a conceptual way, your ability to switch to another stack is is much easier than for somebody mm -hmm. that is only focused on on, uh, um, on 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 the language itself or, or you know syntax mm -hmm. and so on so like for me if, if we take testing as, a, as an example since i've been using i've been using test-driven development for the last seven years and mm -hmm. and 
I've always had this conceptual approach. Like, why am I doing this? What, you know, what, what yeah. should I do and so on? So for me, mm -hmm. switching from one testing framework to another is not that very hard because there are so many similarities between them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I can just find myself uh, in that new environment. I still have to study the syntax and I still have to, you know, get some experience or, you know, get my hands dirty by writing code. But it is easier for me to get into that. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and I know this is, is a long, there... long answer, but let, let me say that there's so much things happening in this blockchain world that things yes. will get outdated yes. and obsolete, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, I, I just had, yeah, on, on that note, I mean, I've thought about it and then I was like, actually, since I really want to commit now for a few years and dive deeper into this blockchain world, uh, I feel like it's probably even maybe an advantage to know about, I guess, like the the mother language of mm -hmm. all these uh, smart contract world. And I wonder whether sometimes this this pain makes me also learn a lot of more, like a lot more aspects that I would maybe not kind of see if everything was working a little bit smoother under the hood, kind mm -hmm. of. Absolutely. I, and I, I totally agree because, you know, it's almost a philosophical question there, Anya, because like, if you've never been hungry, you don't, you don't approve good food. Mm. You, you understand? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. if you haven't stand, you know, banged your head against the wall uh, and tried <laughs> to, 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 to fix a, 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 a tiny problem, then, then um, you wouldn't accept, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't appreciate those, those fantastic frameworks. Last week, and I think I said that to you in the chat, I spent hour, one hour, 45 minutes uh, dealing with one single uh, pro uh, problem and it ended up, I ended up writing this test that I'm highlighting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that was one hour, 45 minutes worth of work, <laughs> you understand? And in, in implementation, it was just one single line of code, you know, it yeah. was, it was this, right? Um, so so and and, yeah. and the the problem wasn't the implementation the problem was testing do you understand and and yeah. the, the the you know i, I teach for, for for a living right so i i'm a coach and i have to sell the idea of testing to students and mm -hmm. if the mm -hmm. if the testing sucks you know if 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 the config, uh, configuration takes forever and if yeah. the b documentation is bad how can i uh you know, with good conscience, tell tell my students to spend a good chunk of your of your learning experience, learning journey, learning this, and mm -hmm. and um, and and you know you have, you will have scar tissue to show for it later. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know there is an upside, of course there is, but but the journey is too heavy sometimes, and that's what I feel mm -hmm. with with this. Uh, with this environment at the moment, you know, with, yeah. with blockchain, Ethereum, on Solidity, that the testing part is 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 neglected. It's hard to to figure stuff out. It's all there, but it's very mm -hmm. hard to find. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so so, uh, you know, but but it is what it is. Um, I would say. I mean, I have like this little, I'm, I'm also like an endless optimist. So uh, the fact that it is the way that it is uh, makes me very hopeful about the fact that I can contribute in the long, long term, if even if I'm just a beginner now, because I, I feel like there's so much more to do to, to make this whole tech kind of uh, available to, to more devs and, and, and to more people. Mm. Yeah, that's, 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 that's something that is very, very... Uh... Uh, very important for me, as you know, I, I'm involved in in, um, in charitable work as well, for, apart from my professional life. Uh, and and one of the things, I mean, the reason why I even do this today is I started very late in life. You know, I'm a, I'm a bit older than, than you were. I'm, I'm 49 years old, so um, not so much older. <laughs> well, I, I, I read in your I, I read in your your description that you said something that you felt like a grandma of of, of Twitch. Uh, yeah so, yeah <laughs> well that would make me the the you know i don't even know what <laughs> the dinosaur of of twitch yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but it's it's like you know making tech accessible to people is is uh, is so important uh, in my opinion i mean we talk about of course a gender gap uh, women in in tech are underrepresented and and mm. and the trend is actually not pointing in the right direction. Uh, oh, really? So in Sweden, we had a better number. We had twenty two percent in the nineties, and we we're down to seventeen percent or eighteen oh, percent in in wow. you know. And Sweden is one of the most you know equal countries in the in Western Europe. Yes. Um, 
so 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 there's a, there's a problem there and then of course we have an ethnic problem um, in 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 Europe in terms of uh, you know in Sweden we have free access to education right but mm -hmm. we, we still uh, we, we're still we still have a situation where where people from from uh, that are immigrants in Sweden are not uh, accessing higher education in the same yes. uh, same level mm -hmm. as, as, as ethnic Swedes and and so on um, but that's on on a, on a very small le well on a country level. If we look at the Europe in in general, we have uh, a lot of of, of uh, multicultural issues and 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 mm -hmm. socio socio economic issues that goes with it and yeah. so on. And if we look at a global scale, I work a lot with Africa and 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 Asia. And you know, there are, I have I have had students in um, or not students but volunteers working for us in Agile Ventures. Uh, or That's with so us awesome. from from so Kenya, nice. for instance, you know, and wow. these these guys have you know hardly any access to 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 internet and computers of and stuff course. like that. Right, so. I'm actually very so I I love I didn't know that uh, about uh, about you and um, uh, yeah I guess I would love to know more about your your background but. But basically, I think uh, I think that's the way to go. I'm also for uh, spreading education, and and very often all that that matters is maybe one person you can ask questions to as well. You know, I mean, despite I mean, the infrastructure of course is like the the first step, but mm. afterwards it's very empowering when you have just a, a human being to mm. to which you can yeah. Uh, and and actually that's why also I'm proud. Um, that I'm a univers like University of the People student, because mm. I guess most of my most of my peers are from Africa, uh, mm. Latin America, mm. and I guess Southeast Asia. Mm. Uh, and then there was like some some weirdos from uh, <laughs> from Europe and uh, and such uh, sometimes. But um, and I just think that's the way to go: free Absolutely. education for Absolutely. all. And, Absolutely. Um, you see, you see, uh, we're gonna focus on code subsidies soon. <laughs> but let me let it's easy yeah. to, to drift away. But but I know. Yeah. So when I started to follow you, I you know I read up on on University of the People, and I actually applied to this semester. Now I, I'm a bit old, so I had issues with 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 uh, getting all my grades together in time. <laughs> so ah, so because the, I, yeah, the high school grades, right? That's yeah, like very yeah. Long time so, ago. <laughs> so so uh, yeah. I did send them some do some docs. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. quite busy. I'm running a company, and this, and then I do a lot of other stuff, right? So, so they, they mm. so I wrote to the Swedish Board of Higher Education, like, could you just give me, a, because they, 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 the Americans wanted some some proof that I am liable to, yeah. yeah, and so, and I still have, you know, usually Sweden is very fast, you know, but, but they, they, the Swedes had, had issues understanding what the Americans wanted, so we had a, I had to exchange like five, six emails, and at that point I was, you know, my blood started to boil, because I was like, yeah. I don't want to deal with this shit, you know, I just want to study, yeah. uh, but, but, so, so next semester I'm going to do with uh, UOP, look, the idea of, of University of, <laughs> because I, I really want to go, I know some of the stuff that you were studying like algebra and, and java and you know scares, scares the shit out of me uh, uh really yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's okay you'll do fine <laughs> well thank you for the encouraging words I, I, I can i can help you with college algebra if you want i had i had a lot of fun with that one <laughs> okay okay that's, that's I, i'm gonna take you up on that because that, mm. no but but i think it's like like so Agile Ventures started back in the days when, when uh, Caltech in California opened up a, a MOOC mm -hmm. uh, called Software as a Service. Um, wow. uh, and, and, and we all started to study that. And I, I think I have, a, uh, yeah, I have a, a certificate I can show you at some point. Because uh, like we, we started to follow this, this kind of blended course, but without, without uh, you know, professor interaction. There was no teaching assistance. Everything was pre-recorded, and we all felt like we need to organize or self-organize to to create mm. study groups, right? And yeah. out of that grew Agile Ventures, right? We we, cool. we incorporated a charity in the UK and so on, and 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 uh, and uh, now we we um, we have a different status. But the thing is that that it all started with study groups, and and uh, we started to use mm -hmm. Google Hangouts. Uh, mm -hmm. to connect like you and I are connecting uh, today, share screen, mm -hmm. study together and so on. And then then the the, the, uh, the guys at Caltech start, stopped uh, with that course, you know, edX don't don't uh, uh, don't run this course anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so so and something happened. I don't know what you know the, the, the activity in Agile Ventures went down a little bit. We started with with some project work and and, and all of that stuff. 
uh, but now we we are back at the at the at a situation where we want to you know reboot this study group thing again you know we want to help people to yes. to get ahead in their studies because i know you know by my own experience that if i need to do things alone even code alone or even less study alone i don't like it i i like to yeah. do it in a social setting uh, yeah. and, and people tend to get better results so so we are launching a summer school uh, with agile ventures where i will be the mm -hmm. coach together with a guy from kenya uh, mm -hmm. and we're going to give away you know like free spots uh, for 10 students uh, uh, and then we're going to allow everybody else to audit it you know just like a, you know be, be part of it without coach support but we will mm -hmm. offer real coach support to 10 10 students from so south, awesome. from africa south america and asia and wow. and we will actually issue certificates and we issue letter of pro, of recommendation and all of that stuff you see I, I i run craft academy and we usually charge like four and a half thousand five thousand euros for a spot like this you know mm -hmm. so and yeah. now we want to give this away for free to underprivileged cool. people so so um that's that's yeah. you know what, what what is the next step for agile ventures at least you know I totally hear what you're saying because, and that's that's awesome. That's so great that you're doing that. And uh, I, I, in the future, if there is any way I could support, I would very much love to because that's definitely one area of, I guess, social area that I'm very interested in. Um, but basically, that's uh, that's the one thing I feel like that is a little bit missing at the University of the People um, program. I, I really like the way it is done, but to be fair. Uh, I can, you know, I've had like when I was in high school, I had, I was the best in class. I had really good grades and my mathematic level was really good. Uh, and the college algebra class, I can't imagine for someone who would have been in my class back then mm -hmm. and maybe in the middle or the last one of the class doing all of this in eight weeks. Mm -hmm. It's super tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and so I can only imagine for someone that is from Africa and mm. and maybe hasn't had like I don't know how the high school level is there but maybe hasn't had the strongest you know mm. mathematics class I've seen some of the answers and I was like whoa some mm. people are really confused mm. as to what is this and that mm. and and the problem is you can interact with the instructor you can always ask something but it's always only by message asynchronous and, and, yes 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 and and that is I mean for something like that's tough for someone who may not have a strong background mm. in mathematics mm. or I mean programming for that matter mm. you know uh, but in programming I consider myself a beginner so I guess I'm, 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 I'm in the same boat. Yeah, no dude, you're totally right and that's that's actually how I make my living because you see when 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 we go out on the market and say that okay you can come to craft academy and you can you can become a software developer in 16 weeks or something like that you know people say mm -hmm. why would i pay you money when i can go to a university for free in sweden or i can do all of this uh -huh. online uh, for free right because you can watch youtube clips you can you can do udemy courses even for you know a, a fraction yeah. of the of the money that that they have yeah. to pay craft academy and to that i say you can do that go ahead and 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 uh, and teach yourself or go to the uni that's perfectly fine we are an alternative because what we create yes. is a context we create a curriculum and a context you have other students to work with and you have coach support when you get stuck not if you get stuck but when yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> right you know I and, mean, and I, I i totally understand because i've decided to go the self-teaching route and everything because my cash situation wasn't the best at the moment mm. when i started but i have actually thought about starting programming and really becoming a dev since 2016 so mm -hmm. it took me a few years uh, but uh, in 2016 i did have the budget still um from my savings and mm -hmm. i was strongly considering doing a three month boot camp and paying maybe four or five thousand euros for it mm -hmm. because i had the budget and mm -hmm. i knew it would most probably accelerate um my my path you know mm -hmm. but uh, I, I see the value in both, mm. and I just think uh, I just think it's a uh, you know it, it depends you mm. know who which type of person mm. are you, and also in which current situation mm. are you. And um, there's no question that exactly. having access to a coach that will 
answer to you when you need it and, and not like three weeks later mm -hmm. uh, uh, is going to yeah. accelerate yeah. it big time. That's yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, because you've been there, right? I, 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 I've seen you struggle and I struggle myself, <laughs> yes. right? You go like, I can, you, you, so, it's so funny with you because you can always see on your facial expression, you know, even when you're in the study, in the focus mode, you're like, oh, now she's not... Nah, nah. Ah, oh, that's that's she's that's not gonna fly, you know. There's something wrong here, you know. But I mean, but but and which brings us to what you are doing, and and, and really, I um I, I not discovered Twitch because I've been been there before. But what I did was I discovered this set the the, the co-study or or you know pr programming uh, streams uh, just just a few months ago, and mm -hmm. and you know we've been at Radio Ventures we've been doing this for many many years but not on mm -hmm. on Twitch as a platform right of course. and 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 i think that that this informal kind of learning is the way of the future and i've been involved in education since the 90s and i know yes. that that it's like uh, you know there are so many different trends in in education and i think that uh, democratizing uh, access to tech education or whatever education you know uh, is is the way to go moving forward content is going to be totally free nobody nobody is going to pay a penny for yeah. textbooks anymore yeah. in just a few years time and th that industry is dying you know mm -hmm. uh, and which i think is good because uh, mm -hmm. it you know uh, books books should be free what we mm -hmm. should charge for is the guidance and the coaching it's it's like like you know in the linux world uh, linux is totally open source and you can't sell linux installations but you can yes. sell a service uh, yeah. I can charge for coming over to your office and actually yeah, yeah. installing Linux on your machine. That is totally okay to charge for. And that mm -hmm. we will end, end up in the same situation in teaching that, you know, see, nothing I do at Craft Academy is unique uh, in terms of content. Yes. But it's the packaging and it's us delivering it that is the, the, the unique experience. And it's the same thing with Agile Ventures. That's, that's us putting everything into sessions like this one you know talking about stuff and uh, and 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 coaching each other learning from each other which is also an important yes. thing because i want to move away from this professor student or you know teacher pupil uh, situation when we talk about crowdsourced learning we talk about the situation where you and i and perhaps subsidian go come together and i am the expert one minute and next minute we 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 hit yes. a topic that you can be uh, an authority on right because you've dealt with it and 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 the the, the coaching thing shifts between the the team members do you understand mm -hmm. or yeah. we are all clueless and we go like what the fuck is this and then yeah. we together do some research and we grow together and that is the beautiful beautiful uh, part of of crowdsourced uh, you know learning or or, or or approach of to 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 technology so absolutely i just noticed the ufo behind you <laughs> oh yeah that's from uh, see i'm an old guy so x files was a big thing for me oh uh, I, I it was a big thing for me too oh, uh, that's I'm, good. I'm, 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 I'm old enough for that one <laughs> that's good, that's good. yeah so so uh, i want to believe is 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 I, I was lucky enough to get it let's get back i think we're losing everyone it's it's a nice yes. <laughs> nice chat but but yeah, but yeah. so so uh uh, th what is what is interesting here is uh, I'm, I'm just going to talk you through some stuff that I, I thought was was uh, um, was cool in those tests, and that is mm -hmm. like once I have deployed this test on on line ten, I, I understand there is some some delay in the stream, but hopefully you can see my code. Mm -hmm. uh, my my contract is. Uh, we need to pass in a buyer address as an argument to my contract because we want to store this uh, um, mm -hmm. as an attribute, right? And then I'm, I'm running a few assertions. And just to comment on, on assertions, I, I've seen that when you uh, write your assertions mm -hmm. in, in your test, you're using the assert keyword, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So in Chai, there are three uh, three ways to, to write assertions. Mm -hmm. um, the assert syntax, the should syntax, and the expect syntax. Mm -hmm. And my personal preference is the expect. Uh, but so everything I do here today, uh, you, you're going to have to like kind of translate to that, uh, to the assert uh, mm -hmm. way of doing this, which is pretty much that you, you do assert and then you pass in the, the, um, the actual, what is it? The first argument is the actual condition and the, the second argument is the expected condition or is it vice versa? 
Mm, yeah, the first one is the actual one, I think. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it's just a, now the reason why I use expect is because I come from the Ruby on Rails world, and that's where we do expect mm -hmm. like this. And in in Cypress, mm -hmm. you also do. When I mean, in, in Cypress, you do should actually actually a lot. Uh, the should notation you can do assert as well. Um, the by the way, mm -hmm. another side note: Cypress is built on top of of Chai. Uh, for instance, so so it uses Chai assertions. So once, so that's also a good thing because if you know Chai and Mocha, it is much easier to to learn uh, Cypress as well. You know. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, now the interesting part here after the initial assertions is the next uh, next describe block. So if the contract already exists, uh, I can the buyer in my case can start. Um, uh, uh, the process of, of, of interacting with the contract. And so we came up with, with this connection uh, to the contract. And I think the subsidian was the one who actually cracked that code. Now, I want to, to call the initiate function on my contract, not as, you know, the guy who issues the contract, but, but, but rather as the other party. So we use the connect uh, uh, function on this. So we we um, we connect the buyer to the contract and we we um, we uh, call upon the initiate uh, function and then I pass in some arguments. So in my case, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a little bit of data uh, and uh, and it's all asynchronous, uh, right? Uh, so that mm -hmm. is that is uh, that is a good thing. And then I can uh, uh, then I can run some assertions on this. Uh, again, what happened when this actually worked? But then we, um, like the last thing we did, we did was to try to connect to this contract as a random wallet. You know, the guy that is not supposed to be able to do that, and so we just run this, uh, this, um, this assertion that you can't perform this operation. Um, so we do a revert on on that one, and and the reverted with is also. Um, it is a, a, um, a chai matcha, but because we're using chai here, but it comes, I think this one comes from, from waffle actually. Uh, uh, so I don't know if, if, uh, uh, if you test with any other kind of setup, if you have access to those, um, to those matches. Uh, I, I think I've seen you write something like that the other day. Should be, should be rejected was, uh, should be rejected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's also a small difference, but mm -hmm. you know, in, in my opinion, this, uh, this kind of set of, or this kind of way of, of writing tests is pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, of course I say that because I wrote them, right? No, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, I always use this, you know, a pretty descriptive message on, on the describe blocks and then I always start my my uh, my it blocks, which is like the actual test, with this uh, way saying is expected to be reverted with message. You know, mm -hmm. so so that's that's what it what it does. And then I have a fantastic setup that I'm really really proud of, and that is that I can execute these tests inside of VS Code. Uh, mm -hmm. And that might sound like a trivial thing, but it actually isn't because that helps me in debugging this this flow right so i just run them as they are uh, and they are passing thank you for that uh, but <laughs> i could now let's say if i say on this on this test on line 13 if i say dot only uh, then i will be executing that particular test uh, alone so it all the others will be ignored, which is good for me. Uh, it goes like this. And then I can set a debugger here. So I just click on this on side of, you know, on the side of, the, of my line of code, put this little red little dot, and I can run the test like this, hopefully. Yes. And now we have stopped the execution, which is very nice because mm. now and yeah, I can do things like I can say contract, and I can see the the contract here. You understand? 
so I can I can go through all of the the attributes. Wait, uh, wait, where did you say contract? How how did? You oh, at the very bottom. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, all right. Here we go. And now I, I will get a console output of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I get the address mm -hmm. and all of that. I can also look at, you know, I can look at all my my uh, my objects. So for instance, waffle, right? We had that. So I can take a look at what is waffle and that's an object. So I can say waffle provider. And I can see that it's a mock, mock provider. And, you know, I can by reading through this and also looking a little bit of of course on documentation all of that i can i can learn more about what is possible to do in 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 test environment and how mm -hmm. can i how can i uh, actually um uh you know interact with my or what wh what is available to me do you understand like wh what mm -hmm. can i do to to uh, continue uh to, to interact with my with my contract um uh, i can i have the you know the random Random wallet, for instance, is also here, uh, mm -hmm. right? So I can get the address and I can go get all of this stuff, right? And I can mm -hmm. execute asynchronous functions if I want and all of the other stuff. So, so that gives me a total different control of my test environment um, because I, I I am able to stop the uh, stop the execution, mm -hmm. um, and I can control it. If you look at the top of the screen, I have those controls. Uh, I can step forward in the test and I can release it, just keep on running it and so on, right? So mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty pretty good. And that setup took me a while. Uh, not, it wasn't documented. Uh, so I had to, uh, again, it doesn't look like much, but this was like two hours worth of work. Worth don't of don't work. worry, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but uh, you know, it's it's as I said at some point when I wrote to you, you, you can't measure progress in uh, in uh, uh, quanti quantity. You know, yeah. uh, it's 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 what you, you what you achieve. So that's that's mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty good, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, but you you are using VS Code, right? Uh, in your setup. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, that seems like the best uh, best approach. I would I would say. Um, ha have you have you used now that we talk about testing? Have you used uh, Cypress anything before or? No, no, I've only heard about it. Okay, would you would you care to see a little bit? Oh, uh, of course. All right, let's see if we can make that happen. So, uh, uh, I have a very very basic setup. Um, so let me just see the uh, this and then basic uh, acceptance testing. Um, so setting this up is really straightforward. It's basically, uh, it's basically adding Cypress um, as a as a dependency, and you can you can add it as a development dependency uh, in your um, uh, in your in your project, right? And this one is extremely simple. The only thing we have is an is uh, is uh, is an HTML page uh, that has three input, uh, yeah, two input fields and a and a button, uh, as you can see. And the only thing we do here is a very, you know, straightforward JavaScripting, saying that we wait for the content to load, we grab the form and a place where we want to display a message, and then we add an event listener uh, for the submit of the form. And then, if the if the name is empty and the email is empty, then we just display you need to fill in your name and you need to fill in your email. And then, if everything else works, we just hide the form and then say thank you for signing up. This is like mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's a bit of nonsense. But in principle, what we could say that in the sales block, if this was a real application, we would make a call to some sort of registration module or something, right? Uh, but for the as a concept, we're just um, having a very uh, straightforward situation where pe people need to to to, uh, to input their name and email, uh, otherwise they can't get this this message, right? So if we look at the testing, so this would be the test for this. Um, so so um, I have some notes here, but pretty much what we are looking at is a Cypress 
uh, syntax for uh, using for those acceptance tests and they are very much alike uh, Mocha and Chai. If you look at, you know, we still have uh, describe blocks and we still have it blocks, right? Uh, so that is that is uh, probably something that you recognize. But then in, in our before block, we are issuing this command that is saying CY visit, uh, which is basically uh, a command to go and visit this particular page on the server that is up and running, right? Uh, because every interaction with a, with a web application needs to happen in a browser. And then we look for a specific part of the page that has an ID of registration. And in that part of the, of the page, we are identifying the input field that has an ID of name. And we are typing Thomas. And then we look at the um, at the part that has an ID of email and we just uh, type my email and then we find another part that has uh, the ID of submit form and then we click on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we have some assertions. Well, if all of this worked, then we the the confirmation message <clears throat> part of, of, of the of the interface should contain text Thank you for signing up. That's pretty mm. straightforward. And mm. the <clears throat> the form that has an ID of registration should not be visible anymore. Uh, and that is the that is the test case. Uh, that is what we refer to as happy path. Right? Everything works. Uh, the user behaves the way the the user is supposed to behave, and uh, and nothing is is extraordinary. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I just run this, then I can just do yarn Cypress. And in my setup, what this command does is that it spins up uh, a web server. And then once the server is up, it also uh, starts the test, the test runner. And apparently this is of course not working because it's a demo, so it always fucks up. Let's see, um, why wouldn't, uh, so yarn. We just do yarn. Really, uh, NVM list. That's all. It, it, it always happens when you do a demo. Things are basically not working. Uh, yeah, I know. System. Right. So, why would this not work? Uh, really. Uh, okay. So uh, npx Cypress install oh shoot uh, that was that was a bummer I wonder why that happened so so Cypress is using a Chrome browser to test your applications or Electron mm -hmm. it depends what you want so what will happen once we get this to, to run is that a window will open and you will get a ch uh, we will be presented with a choice what test we want to run we only have one test uh, so that's pretty straightforward but then um, then you know you actually see the interaction you, there is a browser and you can see that happen uh, on on screen let's see if that works now no okay so um, and um, uh, yarn block and yarn now it's so weird that's gonna have to wait for us a second it should be pretty fast it's a small uh, it's a small app so there is this this uh, streamer from Australia. He and I have been chatting, and he he uh, started to use Cypress uh, like two three weeks ago, and he mm -hmm. said it was like a religious epiphany for him. Um, oh wow! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but it, because it is so simple, he, he wouldn't even believe it, and I I totally agree with that because the you know for me it was the same thing. I, I've been doing a lot of different different other t kinds of tests and. Mm -hmm. um, 
and he's also using Vue because so so this is just a proof of concept. I'm using just a regular, um, you know, regular HTML and, and JavaScript, you know, code here. But mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you are testing uh, because it's uh, it's totally independent of, of of the underlying technology. So it's it's not a not a big problem. Let's see if we can make this work now. Really? What the fuck? Am I just... Am I being... Is this Saturday morning blues or... Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, it's me. It's not them, you know. So, uh, let's do yarn start here. And then I'm gonna pop this one open in another one and then yawn. I'm so used to a different setup of mine, so I was like just making a a mess. I was making a mess, mm -hmm. I mean, that's <laughs> right. Um Right, so I have two tests. Uh I can run them all perhaps. No, let's run this one. So here's the browser. And this is it, right? You see, mm -hmm. you can see, you can rerun them over and over again. And and uh, you can see the interaction. Uh, the test environment is actually doing all of this stuff for us. And if I now would remove this dot only, uh, this would be run, all the tests will be run like mm. this, you know. Uh, and here I'm just basically just checking for the missed missing name or missing email and stuff like that you know so it's uh, it's pretty straightforward and uh, the good thing is that if i open up my dev tools i can interact with this um with this this user interface and i can get you know i can take a look at what does the the html look like i can get hold of all the all the elements and and all of that stuff you know that you basically need to 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 uh to uh, uh to be able to uh to identify those nodes and so on so mm -hmm. it's 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 pretty it's pretty straightforward and it's um um it's quite powerful i would say you know it's it's really mm -hmm. really powerful um and again if you if you do react or if you do view or anything like that it doesn't matter uh, at all you can you can mm -hmm. because since you are in the browser you're very very close to where the user will be uh, yes. the end user of your application so if you do uh, dApps you know you want to interact with with um, uh, with your front end if you if you you know interact with some smart contracts that should be pretty straightforward as well uh, actually so my next step will be once I'm kind of more e oh well, that's the wrong project w once I'm more into that that smart contract and it actually does what i want it to do mm -hmm. which should be pretty soon because it's it's not a very important a very complex um complex implementation i will build like a distributed app around this or or mm -hmm. or some interface and and my plan is to use um use cypress to mm -hmm. to uh, uh to to work with that and i th sure. i think i will stumble into some issues because uh it's a little bit about stubbing out or, you know, having faked uh, wallets and stuff like that. What is it called that? Um, uh, uh, test wallets or what? what yeah, the me MetaMask. Uh, ah, MetaMask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, a, I guess, a wallet, but browser wallet. I'm, I'm not sure how they call them specifically. Exactly. So, so I, I'm also like uh, not really on board with that, but if you say MetaMask. Mm -hmm. uh, in Cyprus, IO. Right. So apparently, I wasn't. I'm not the only one who has thought about this. Uh, so, uh, so you can't test interact with extensions with ease. As a way. Right. 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 But I think that I will be able to crack this. This. This sounds like bullshit to me. To me. What? Uh, what? What do they say? So. 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 In order to um, in order to interact with with uh, extensions, ah. you know, like because you have to you have to actually um, you know pop this one open. Uh, but I I think MetaMask in the end is actually it's just handling the uh, 
smart contract level, right? So I don't think... Because I guess, or like my understanding is your MetaMask is only hand handling the, the transfer of tokens and like the, the agreement and checking that there is enough tokens to do Yeah, so you probably, have to, you probably have to log in, right? So you have to authenticate yourself somehow, right? Exactly. But actually what you need to do is, I guess, connect it with your local like test. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so but, th this one is on, is on yeah. Roops TN test network, and I just probably need to go into localhost 8545. I, that, 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 this one is not started at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't even think you have to use this extension. You can do this programmatically, probably, you know, or embed mm -hmm. this into your application uh, somehow. Um, but I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure yet. Uh, I guess I will have to follow you as you as you solve that problem because that's where I get a little stuck now. <laughs> okay. With MetaMask. Okay. okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because I, I'm gonna hit that pretty soon actually. Because, uh, but there are there are a few steps that I have to go for, go go mm -hmm. through before. Like so so one one thing that I am not really on board with is. Uh, is this ethers js right this uh, uh, the ability to interact have you seen this one e ethers version 5 or mm. something like that no okay so because this is a, a javascript library that you can use in uh, i guess view definitely in react I, well absolutely in view as well to interact with with smart contracts from your from your application yeah so so i can read i can access them by addresses and i can you know um uh you know invoke so functions and sign them and so on another another kind of web 3 js uh, thing or? i think that's exactly what it is right okay uh, but, mm -hmm. but isn't web 3 like starting to get like i mean that's where i got stuck as well is basically um my tutorial, uh, the one that I was following a little bit, um, it is like, I guess, uh, eight months or nine months old. Mm. And in January, Web3 was uh, like deprecated, or I don't know how you call it, from mm. MetaMask. So now we have to use Ethereum, uh, window.ethereum, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going through the MetaMask tutorial uh, for this uh, Ethereum provider. Okay. Um, to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you see, and that's that's the that's the confusion. Like because what you're saying is totally new to me. Uh, I've been, you know, I, I I've read a little bit about Web three, and I read about Ethers. Like you know, so so uh, it's it's an alternative, right? As uh -huh. uh, as I put up, but um, but it's 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 a it's a jungle. Uh, you know. It's, yeah, it's, I know. <laughs> it is a jungle. Uh, I'm glad I'm not alone <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, uh, and so, so, yeah, no, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think the first uh, steps I managed to make it work that at least it detects. Because for me, like it's. A, I mean, MetaMask is one of the biggest wallets, so uh, I, I guess I'm just gonna go with what they recommend mm -hmm. because I do want MetaMask to be working uh, first. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I got through the first stage and that, that even seems to work. I, I mean, it does detect whether MetaMask is there or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think for the next uh, stage of my, of, of my installation of, of this sort of, I run into this problem that I was mentioning mm -hmm. earlier, that my MetaMask doesn't seem to want to connect to my um, Docker image uh, blockchain so right 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 mm -hmm. so so when i when i'm not in test test environment but i rather you know i i actually start my things locally to to manually test then mm -hmm. then then um, uh, then then i just spin up a local local blockchain you know um so I, I haven't come so far as to dockerize it which i will be very happy to look at when you you know, get any, oh, make no, any it, progress it, with it. it. It's done already. I mean, there is a simple Ganache uh, Docker image that that was not even that was super easy even for me to okay. to have running. <laughs> yeah, my problem will be that I'm just not using Ganache. You know, so that's exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So Subsidian says you have to set up 
port forwarding probably for Docker, right? And uh, right. So you have to forward the Docker to to the local host or local host to the Docker container. Can can you el yeah? Because uh, elaborate on this. Like I have to. Uh, what what do you mean exactly? So, I I mean. Yeah, but but maybe that's not the topic for you for today. Maybe no, but, but I did, yeah. well, I, I, I'm definitely interested. So okay. uh, let's see. If, uh, I you would see, love like, love to get mm. Subsidian into into our chat so we could tell us yeah. instead of right. Can let's see. Can can you join us? So uh, Subsidian, just to explain my current setup. So I have. Um, I have a specific, uh, I mean, I, I, I have this Ganache image, uh, this blockchain image, Docker image uh, that was running uh, on that port, 8545. Uh, and, um, and so accordingly in my, um, in, in my VS code, in my, in my code, in the configuration, I put 0000, zero, zero, zero for uh, the, the host and 8545 and I managed to make it work between VS code I mean between between my code the command line and and uh, this ganache image this works now the problem I'm actually having is connecting this ganache blockchain that seems to be available because I can I can access it through my v, uh, WSL2 command line but I'm not managing to connect it with uh, metamask. And I've actually managed to do so in the past. Uh, you have to enter, I guess, the host name, the uh, the port, and the chain ID. And I've managed to do it when I had uh, like the GUI for Ganache. Uh, but I don't know why at some point it wasn't working anymore. It's all very experimental. It's it's like a pain. Everything worked, right? I, I did the first tutorial. Everything worked, and then the GUI from Ganache for some reason started being buggy. Couldn't work anymore. And so I had to do everything with the Ganache CLI and Docker, and that's a pain. <laughs> it's just a pain. We have yeah. Carl with us now. Hi, hi, ah. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Good. How are you? We're hanging in there. We're hanging in there. Uh, <laughs> this, so, what, what can you tell us? What do you know about this that can help us to demystify this this this, this thing? Yeah, I'm not super sure. Like the the Windows subsystem for Linux networking makes it all like a thousand times more complicated um, yeah because of all like the weird like networking nonsense they do there um I don't, I don't know if it's as easy as like just running the docker container or if there's something you have to do on the like windows subsystem as well yeah exactly because i mean if you if you look do you have the metamask browser extension yes you do right thomas yes i do yeah but i have a, I have a so, mac yeah, so if you exactly if you go in there and you can set this custom RPC, right? Oh, there we go. Let me see if I remember my can I? Oh, right. Can I uh, right. So custom RPC, right? Exactly, and that that's the the first time that I did it, and with this uh, GUI from Ganache, uh, it it was working. I managed to actually connect to the to the Ganache uh, kind of uh, test blockchain. Uh, <laughs> but now um, that's, uh, yeah, that's, but I guess, so I'll, I'll just check out how, how you make it. And uh, I guess for that's, that's my problem, right? That's why I want to use vir virtual box right now, because I figure that this layer of v WSL uh, just makes it uh, more complicated. Yeah. Have you, um... Uh, Carl or Subsidian, wh wh what do you prefer? How should I call you? Uh, you call me whatever. Carl, all right. So, so have, have you? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, so, so uh, have you? Have you experimented with with starting this like Dockerized on on your Mac setup or? I have not yet with Docker now, but I imagine like I, I know like in the past with Docker, a lot of it's just like making sure you forward all the ports correctly so like local host traffic gets routed the way you want it but um yeah again not super sure with windows right but uh, exactly like uh, i mean yeah exactly so, so my i guess my problem is then docker to metamask that's the problem somehow because docker with my command line with wsl2 
works. That works. Okay, but that you can't. Works. Okay, but then mm. you have to. So so basically, the problem would be then not the the dockerizing, but rather having your like your extension, like the one that I'm pulling up now, to exactly. actually connect to that network. Docker image. Yep. Okay, and and are you running that Docker im? Uh, see, I, I'm like, it might sound weird, but I, I know jack shit about Docker actually. <laughs> I'm just theorizing here, but 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 so so somebody make like uh, so, so, so the other chatter mentioned that EC2 instance on the Amazon Web Services now. So can you that that Docker in the Docker instance needs to be run somewhere, right? Which uh, and and are you running that locally on your computer or are you uh, running it up no. in the cloud somewhere no i'm uh no would that make a difference because maybe because there is a there is a like a documentation on how to run it locally so in principle i don't think it should have difference because again as carl said with 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 right port for forwarding you should be able to to uh, to access that. Now I know that Windows and, for instance, even the Big Sur, the the, the latest uh, um, OS X, they they are pretty restrictive with uh, you know giving access to ports and and you know security has been tightened. Uh, so that could be a, a configuration setting that you can't really use certain ports. I could imagine, but I don't know if I'm if I'm on the right oh. track here. Um, any thoughts on that, Carl? Yeah, that's super sure. Yeah. yeah, I think you could like slap it in an EC2 instance and like use the public IP. Mm -hmm. um, but then anyone could connect to your like test blockchain if they had your public IP for your EC2 instance. But, but I mean, it's like the equivalent they... of like a Docker container. Yeah, but they couldn't do much with it, right? Because no, it's, no. no. It's just a... Yeah, but and and you can always close that EC2 uh, once you're done mm -hmm. with your experiments, right? Because uh, you know, so so. Uh, and nobody can overuse it or anything. But do, uh, do you have any experience with using Amazon Web Services, Anya? Uh, no, Crusader does just a little bit, but um, I I'm not familiar. But like it's EC2 instance is it's just like a, a technical term from AWS or right? Yeah, well, it's 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 a it's a it's one of the services. Now, if we're talking jungles, that you know AWS is a is a is a jungle in itself. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Um, it sounded so, like it from Crusader, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, and I, I've, I use Amazon Web Services only for for storage purposes uh, in my mm. training, right? So, so I teach my 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 students how to use a service called S3 to create something mm -hmm. that they refer to as buckets, which are basically just storage containers for images or documents or stuff like that, right? So, uh, but the the this is the service list. If you look at my screen now, um, for everything, all the th all the shit you can do on Amazon Web Services, and EC2 is just one of many, many, many services uh, you can you can use, and that basically allows you to spin up um, a virtual server uh, in the cloud mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, some sort of. Uh, of a predefined configuration, whether you want to, you know, you can spin up a Linux uh, or Ubuntu versions, yada yada. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, so one thing that I did f four years ago, uh, or f yeah, f yeah, it was four years ago, uh, was that I accidentally pushed up my my credentials to an open GitHub repository, and I uh, I used to smoke back then, so I was out having a cigarette, and I and I was checking my phone. And it was the day before Christmas, I remember, mm -hmm. and I got an, a message from Amazon Web Services saying that, sir, we just want to make you aware that uh, your budget limit on um, Amazon Web Services has reached, you know, has been reached, yeah. and you owe, owe us $4,500. What? What? And, and I, I literally started to shiver, right? <laughs> the, oh, my like, God. What the fuck is going on? And... and and so I, I kind of chain smoked like three, four cigarettes <laughs> before I could calm down, you know. <laughs> and 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 then I, the, my first thought is, how am I supposed to explain this to my wife that I just blew yeah. up, you know, f f forty thousand Swedish crowns uh, on on nothing? And and then I I sat down in front of my computer and and you know I went into this this website, this this dashboard, and it's like a jungle, really. And I had to go through. Uh, 
every region that Amazon Web Services has, and back then they had like 20 regions, and people have been spinning up EC2 instances on every uh, subsystem of Amazon Web Services and mining, mining uh, bitcoins basically. That what that was. Oh what, wow! What they did. Yeah. Okay. So I had to manually go on and then close every every server down, and then I called the Amazon Web Services, um, you know, customer support, which is a task in itself to actually get somebody on the phone, mm -hmm. and and I explained the situation. The, the lady there was like, sir. Uh, we, we're gonna waive this. It's it's okay, but please don't do it again. You know, um, she she could backtrack what what really happened, and and so I didn't have to pay that four and a half grand. So that was nice. Then Oof. fast forward two years, Carl and Anya, really, and I do the same fucking shit again. You know, and imagine imagine that it was two thousand five hundred dollars before before I I, um, I noticed that, and I had to call them again, and and that lady says. But sir, you've done this before, and I go like, yes, because I'm an idiot. And she goes very politely, uh, it's, it, it, "It would appear so," she said to me. Oh you no! Know. <laughs> but, but they waived that as well, so I didn't have to. But I, that, I've done this twice. I've actually managed to pull to push up my my root password and an API key, basically twice oh. to a public repository on github which qualifies me as the stupidest person on earth i think oh no that's definitely something i would be probably po possibly doing as well because i don't be very so careful <laughs> nowadays they have a different system so so we have uh, we have one root password and then then of course i got uh, i can set up different users with very limited access uh, so because we do give away those credentials to our students uh, but with you know, you can assign privileges to to uh, to sub accounts nowadays, so that's it's it's much mm -hmm. easier. But still, um, it's um, it's it's a problem. But you know, uh, all of this could be also done from a command line. So becoming really good at Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, serverless computing or or database storage or whatever, is 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 a good thing. I've only scratched the surface of this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, Crusader can probably, you know, show you how to spin up an EC2 instance. It's it's pretty straightforward, and then you can try to use that. That would be a public, as Carl uh, said, it would be a public blockchain that you can interact with. Uh, that should be pretty straightforward. And then, since you are off your own local host, then the security settings would probably be a little easier to understand and tweak, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. What are your thoughts on that, Carl? Yeah, I think that makes sense. You can um, add security groups that only allow traffic from your public IP at home so that other people can't connect. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, yeah, it's really, really tough because, as you said, you know, configuration is not programming, and I'm actually <laughs> really interested in the programming, but I. <laughs> it's so difficult to get there with this all this whole Windows WSL2 and blockchain and ah but thanks a lot for for explaining to me a, a little bit and then um, I guess I'll ask him sure sure uh, guys I'm uh, running a little bit uh, low on time it's been hour and uh, 40 minutes um, I was planning on two hours but I think I'm gonna be my son is craving for some sort of uh, food substances, um, <laughs> also known as breakfast. We uh, won't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> no. But but I I I will be continuing this. Uh, so something you you were based in in Seattle. Where, where where are you? Yeah, I'm in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Again, fantastic city. But I assume that it's late night where you are. Where is it? Yeah, it's twelve thirty in the morning. <laughs> There you go. So you probably need to, to go to, to sleep soon as well. Um, I will uh, uh, hopefully, you know, if you guys want to join in next time around, I, I will be on, uh, around tomorrow and then, of course, next week. We can actually do more more programming. Uh, yeah. But, you know, um, just to, to fill you in, Carl, what, what you remember last time when you said, why don't you use, um, uh, what was it? Um, uh, no um, require do you remember at the end yeah. of the mm -hmm. of the stream and i was like no don't ask me to do more because i was running <laughs> really late uh, <laughs> i um, i actually did that later and uh, 
that that was an interesting experience because the code itself was pretty straightforward, right? We just do require message sender equals buyer address and then output um, an error message. The problem was that I, you know, I followed my own structure in the test. So I was doing that in a before block and I couldn't because then I run into weird, weird issues with the test framework or test environment not being able to uh, assess gas price for that for that call and mm -hmm. uh, and i was telling anya this you know to more than one hour 40 minutes and the only thing i came up with was was this way of testing where i called this a wait on the expect uh, statement and then uh, execute this this command inside of the of the assertion and then run the, the the matcher on it. You know that was the only thing that I came up with. But this one now works, and and the random wallet cannot initiate the the, the process. Uh, so that was a good. It was a good suggestion, Carl. But it fucked me up pretty much in te in terms of, <laughs> of time uh, time mm. things. You know, um, but but um, you know all progress is good progress. I would say all progress. I see you got the enum to work too. So yeah, good. but I was a bit, a bit. Uh, we will. I will use e enums, but I was like a, a little bit uh, not happy with it because I was hoping that I could access these values. Do you understand? Somehow, what I do access is one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. and, and yeah, not yeah, yeah. the the string value because once you've compiled it, the contract doesn't remember those values anymore. You know. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, so. Yeah, I think I saw that in the Waffle docs. They mentioned that it's like when you assert the state of an enum, it comes back as numbers, which yeah. I think is really annoying. Yeah, and and so so probably when when I reach the stage when I want to build an interface for this, where you can actually you know work with this, then I would have to remember you know what what these are so i can have my ether js actually you know translate that or my my front end translate that that number to one of those strings so so i can mm -hmm. so i can output this one way or another which is a, a bit unintuitive for me uh, because it it would be easier i mean you can tamper with that then you know and and you're you're doing the same thing twice one once in in the contract and once on the user user interface layer and I, I'm not really happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's another topic before we part, you know, there's always another topic. Uh, do you, so so I am really not happy with the gas prices. Um, it, yeah. And it seems like the bigger the contract is, the bigger the price. Is that correct assumption? Uh, so um, Crypto Zombies is actually a good source to go through to, to have more information on that. Uh, but basically, um, it, it just like certain certain things. I'm, I'm just trying to to see my my notes again because I I have this here. Um, but yeah, yes, exactly. So um, each 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 uh, exactly each individual operation has a gas cost based roughly on how much computing resources will be required to perform that operation. Mm. Uh, that's what I had in my notes. And uh, the total gas cost of your function is the sum of those ga gas costs. And so, I mean, they, they tackle, of course, like the... I think you have to do stuff in solidity that may be counterintuitive and not as efficient in normal programming just because certain things, for instance, are using less gas and... Mm. and um, uh, exactly uh, i think in structs for instance but there's uh yeah because they, they say struct packing for instance you can do struct packing to save gas mm -hmm. for instance um uh exactly if you have multiple u ints inside a struct you, it will be using a smaller sized u int and you are using a smaller sized u int when possible mm. this will allow solidity to pack these variables together and will take up less storage because that's what i understood right as soon as you touch the the solidity storage kind of mm. uh you 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 need to pay for okay. it okay 
Because I mean, basically, the, all the information stored on the blockchain is costly to to mm. kind of verify, and they just want to prevent uh, they want to prevent uh, abuse, I guess, or or inefficient code mm. or whatever. Mm. Um, so basically, for instance, so 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 this is more like like if we look at my line eleven, where I create this required service struct, and I have uh, an integer of two fifty six. That is the size, right? So so we mm. allocate two fifty six yeah. characters in the on the on the chain on the memory. It's like yeah. So I could. So I, they I, say here they spent they 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 mentioned that specifically. Uh, they say uh uh, uh wait. Uh, normally, there's no benefit to using these subtypes uh, because Solidity reserves 256 bits of storage regar regardless of the U inside mm -hmm. size. But that's uh, like except when you use those in a struct. Okay. But could it, so, so this amount. So in your case, it would make a difference. Yeah, because this, this will be a double digit thing, right? The amount. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So, so I could. So if I just do u int like this, this automatically says 256, or our reserves 256. But could I do like th what is? I don't know what the smallest is exactly, but here I have u int 32. It yeah, I've, I've seen 32, used. right? Yeah. yeah. So it, this would save you gas. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. And so okay. All right. So 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 I mentioned this in 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 a stream that you did yesterday. I think that I've I've read or heard something about using proxy contracts which is basically if what i you know because it, there's also a gas price involved when you deploy a contract right um yes exactly yeah, yeah and and so that like, like this this purchase contract is it could become quite you know big uh, quote unquote and then so every time I deploy it, I would have to pay a gas price but what i understand that and i want to you hear can you only guys, deploy it once right yeah, but but for in this case, for if I want to, so this is a purchasing thing. So I want to deploy this with one buyer address, and then I want to use it again for another buyer. So I would deploy it twice, right? Two instances of this contract. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So so what I understand or what I heard is that you can deploy proxy contracts, which are basically just references to um, to another contract. And only store the data that is unique uh, mm -hmm. for that particular you, instance, which would be exactly. a little bit so like inheritance in object-oriented programming, right? Yeah. So is that the off-chain, on-chain logic? I, I think, uh, yeah, that's that. So it makes sense. I, I'm, I'm just, I just know a little bit like uh, high level on this, but my understanding is that you can find a way to to perform certain operations off-chain. And that's actually very important so that only the relevant uh, information that you want to be stored in the blockchain eventually uh, gets through. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, Carl, have you heard anything about proxy proxy contracts? Is that a concept? I have that... not, no. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit if you guys are okay with that. Proxy contracts. Solidity. Let's have a look because I... So there is something called uh, upgradable smart contracts and proxy delegate. Do I see? Let's have a look at proxy delegate. You should have to upgrade smart contracts without breaking any dependencies. Mutability and there is hard to achieve. Uh, <laughs> right. So this is the thing. You want to delegate some function calls to other contracts. You understand? So because then if that would also decrease the size of your contract probably um, from mm -hmm. what i understand so delegate call uh, additional transaction properties let me see will remain the ones of the initial caller uh, mm, i will have to read more the the if uh, eternal storage pattern uh, have you heard about that yeah. anything uh, anya or Carl? Mm. No, I guess not. Uh, not this name. I would have thought that. To have a developer storage from contract logic. I mean, it just sounds like the logic that Ethereum is, uh, Solidity is trying to follow. You know, it's just mm. to be efficient and have as little 
but I, I don't know no, like in details. No. No, no, it's, it feels a little too early to, to dive into this kind of thing. But, but for optimization, you know, purposes, uh, yeah. we probably want to, to, because gas prices are the, 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 the thing that will probably be, uh, um, you know, especially in a contract where you have a lot of actions and interactions, you know, like you move things back and forward and update the state of the, of the, f like in this, in my case, when, you know, when a seller does something or, or deliver, you know, or the buyer wants to initiate the, the, the process, then I have to leave a tender, the tender needs to be approved or rejected and so on and so forth. That will be mm -hmm. a lot of interactions and the gas prices can, can, yes. can become a, a, a hindrance. Um, and I don't even know if this is a good use case, but you know, I'm an enterprise kind of guy, so I want to have some sort of a, you know, functionality that will provide you know, make, actually, make sense in, in the business setting, you know. I actually, just as a small mention, uh, I'm, I'm very psyched about your, I guess, simple, but yet uh, like the use case, because Crusader and I, we are actually thinking to enter in a bigger project, which would be to have smart, smart contracts, such as this one, for instance, like simple, that will reflect local laws, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he's been already involved in that kind of research. So I think it's a very, it may be a simple use case, but you know, um, I, I will maybe like uh, take, take you up on that because we, I mean, translating that into something that is also, like, let's say, legally compliant mm. uh, 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 makes it much more complex yet so much you know, more useful in, in today's world. So, and a lot of governments are actually looking into, you know, uh, law, uh, like the, the interaction with legal and blockchain and, and how to, to, to make everything more efficient mm. like that. So, mm. yeah. No, no, absolutely. You know, if you guys have anything that you, you can A, add to these contracts in terms of logic and but B, if you want to use it somehow, uh, that's, that's, that would be awesome, you know, so, so, well, uh, I, because you know a part that brings us back to a, you know, the discussion we had before and it's like you know documentation is hard uh, you know there's yes. so many things that is hard with this with this 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 domain but what is the toughest for me is to actually find really useful uh you know use cases for this technology apart from the obvious which is the the cryptocurrency right uh, oh which but the cryptocurrencies often yeah okay and I, I know what you're saying yep i want to see i want to use this for, for business purposes i mean like you know people say Have that you looked into the concept of nfts because i think in the business logic that's definitely one huge huge and very diverse uh use case i i've looked at some attempts to expl explain NFTs, you know, and, and, mm. and I didn't get smarter by it. So if you have any good resources that could, could, uh, uh, could, could, could provide me with a good explanation, just send it my, my way, of course, and I, I will, I will read up on it, but I, I don't, don't know much. Uh, and if you can attempt to explain it, you know, then, then I would love to hear that explanation. Uh, you don't, uh, you don't speak German, do you? Unfortunately, no. Okay, okay, because Crusader wrote a paper, a paper and, uh, about multi-chain governance mm -hmm. and uh, in that he used the example of buying a home uh, and that's also related to the concept of NFT because basically NFT is not related to art, it's not related to anything specific in that way, it's just a reflection of the concept of ownership. Mm -hmm. And it also means that I think you can automatize a lot of things uh, around ownership, transfer of ownership and breaking down ownership, ownership into smaller parts of ownership. And NFTs, I think, are going to be huge in the real estate fact, uh, um, uh, like area as well, just for that, that matter, to give another example than just art. So, so you can basically purchase parts of a, of a subject of a, of something. Uh, well, I think, yeah, I mean, yes, of course you can. Um, I mean, you, you probably can in real life as well, ex except in real life, it can get really, really complicated. And with NFTs, you, you just have a, like, like a, the all the benefits of this trustless environment peer-to-peer mm -hmm. -peer environment uh, and you just have a much more flexible way of dealing with ownership and mm -hmm. transfer of ownership i think that's that's the main i think that's the key message here 
So, so, so a very simple use case. Let, let me just see if I'm on the right track. Let's say that mm -hmm. you, me, and Carl, we purchase a piece of property uh, mm -hmm. uh, using an NFT, and we own 33 point something, you know, percent of it each. And yeah. and let's say that we rent out this this property to a tenant, and the tenant pays rent. And mm -hmm. we can predefine that a certain amount of the of the rent will go to maintenance and all of that stuff, and then there's a certain amount that is like predefined as as you know the overhead or our mm -hmm. profit as true yeah. capitalists, and then yeah. and then we just automatically share on the you know if I own thirty three percent, then exactly. that is automatically transferred to me as exactly. as, as my uh, dividend. Yep. Uh, it, I mean, that's the simplest use case I could think of at this point. It, it, exactly. But that's that's exactly the idea. And then, I mean, uh, yeah. And then there can be so many use cases in today's world of, you know, more peer-to-peer -peer kind yeah. of uh, use cases. Like even, even, I don't know, you know, sharing your car or whatever. Uh, but uh, I guess that's the, that's the main point behind NFTs. It's just... The, but let, the, let, the let me run this through you then. Because if we mm -hmm. take this into the, into the digital domain... Let, let's say mm -hmm. that from what I heard, it's like, you know, you can own pieces of songs or what have you, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so let's say that I, we, uh, let's say you create a, a, a YouTube, uh, you know, tutorial, let's say tutorial. Okay. Um, yes. And, and, and uh, you want to sell part of that to me. Okay. So you, you say like, mm -hmm. you sell, you sell 10% of that, of that video. Uh, to mm -hmm. me and then you upload it let's say to to uh, youtube and somebody uses that or, you know just watches that or something like you know and and is that are we talking like copyright uh, th things or are we talking just ownership in terms of well, if there is any any money involved i will be entitled to those 10 percent no yeah uh, actually both and everything because uh, like the, the the concept around nft and of course the blockchains uh, have proven useful to be able to you know like verify the the originality of of something so that's that's the important thing because you can track everything so everything that has to do with copyright everything that has to do with the uh lo like the how do you call that the logistic chain mm -hmm. or like uh, through what your pro like I, as far as I know, the Chinese have already, like a couple of years ago, dived into um, verifying uh, the origin and quality of wine uh, using blockchain because, uh, you know, because there's a lot of scams or wine or alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember, you know, in a, the Chinese love uh, great alcohol from uh, it's like a luxury product, mm. uh, great alcohol from from Europe. But uh, there are so many scams, and so the blockchain helps for that. And yeah, so um, uh, so the the thing in terms of the question that you're asking, the thing is, it's only data on a blockchain. Mm. So as long as data on the blockchain is not law or legal, uh, of course it's in a in a way useless mm. you know what i mean mm. um but the potential is there and that's why crusader and i were, were like thinking about uh seeing to maybe like have some smart contracts that could reflect law mm. uh, because that's i think where we're moving towards that part of what is normally done through a contract um with words that you have to sign could be the bare fact that mm. it's reflected on a, a certain uh, UI or like a, a web page and mm. you read through and once you accept uh, with your identity also verified on a blockchain and everything, mm. then everything else is automatic and there can be some, for instance, conditions that are uh, that need to be done before on the smart contract before like the transaction goes like mm. for instance you know you want to buy the house uh, you've said yes but basically the smart contract is still on hold until it sees that you have sent the money to the smart contract address mm. you know mm. uh, and and only then will it make sure that it registered you on the blockchain let's say the government blockchain if we're thinking 10 years from now 20 years mm. from now the government blockchain that is actually the um reflection of the grundbuch i, I don't know how yeah, you call yeah, that yeah. maybe yeah I, I was thinking the swedish uh, guys must know what it means but yeah, yeah. Gr basically... Grund, it's, it's it's grundbuch in swedish so it's it's exactly <laughs> that's, that's what i thought it must be similar 
<laughs> yeah, and so that that's just to give a, a glimpse. And um, and basically, NFTs means just the only thing it means is a non fungible token in its pure definition. It's just a token. And it doesn't even have to be blockchain per definition, but now we're talking about it in, in blockchain because it's like the, the crypto world and everything. And so I guess the only thing is is it's it's different from any other token. It's mm -hmm. it's right. It's non fungible, so you can't mix them up and pick another one, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same value. So mm -hmm. yeah. No, I say that. So this is uh, this is so interesting. So I, I know uh, I know a lawyer here in Sweden, um, a, a good friend of mine, and he's into intellectual property and and mm -hmm. and very oriented yeah. in, in 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 or or at least very curious about. Uh, the future of, of blockchain and and and, ah, and the interaction of, of between business entities and people and so on right so so you know i would i would love to at some point uh, you know in in a few weeks or months time if we could do a like a similar session like we're doing today where like but la, la, as a panel debate or discussion uh just um, just to to ping pong ideas because this is uh, that would be awesome and crusader is quite knowledgeable about that sure. because he's, he's the also the author about like block, blockchain by privacy uh privacy by blockchain design and um his best friend and uh collaborator with which they have r written a few papers on blockchain he is actually exactly in this uh he's like a legal researcher mm -hmm. and he's working on those topics and he's written stuff about you know blockchain and legal and and blockchain and and ai uh, or like ai and legal and 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 ip etc he mm -hmm. knows a lot about that as well mm -hmm. so yeah so so one one use case that just sprang to my my, my head is like in, in Sweden, we have this um, this system for music creators that they submit the the the, the music to. I think it's a state-owned agency, and then every radio show and every TV station and everyone that even you know podcasters and so have to pay them a certain amount of money, and then the artist will get a, a piece of the action based mm -hmm. on something. You know. Um, it's it's yeah. it's one way for them to 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 earn money, and I think we have similar systems like that across Europe and in the United States, and you know, mm -hmm. and so on. So so I was actually at a at a sales pitch two three years ago with a company that wanted to incorporate blockchain technology in that flow, you know, um, so that mm -hmm. we the 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 payout to the artists will actually reflect the the. Uh, the actual amount of how often his or her music has been used, because nowadays mm -hmm. it's based on assumptions. Um, yeah, you know, so that's it's it's a very uh, unfair system to everyone. The 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 users pay way more. They are like they have to pay in chunks and yeah. say that if you reach two hundred thousand people, you pay an amount of money, and if you if you yeah. your audience is bigger, then you pay much much more, right? And mm -hmm. the artists they get also a, a, an assumed amount of money like oh yeah. we think that you were you know your song is popular and then you will get this and and so on right but with mm -hmm. blockchain you could actually democratize this so so the users yeah. will pay for actual usage and uh, and the artists um, will get their their real you know the, the real money do you know about the brave browser do you use it nope Okay, you should look into that because, uh, of course, it's a different use case. But honestly, I would I would say they're quite similar. What is it called? In the end, break. Yeah. Is it called break? It's called uh, brave. Brave, brave, brave. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and uh, it uses the cryptocurrency called uh, Basic Attention Token. And mm -hmm. basically, Brave Brave Browser is good for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's I think one of the most uh, privacy like uh, friendly browsers. That's actually their mission, you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and what they're doing also is like they're scrapping away uh, the the advertisement that is normally put mm -hmm. on on websites, and they show their own advertisement. And uh, like the idea is Brave gets a little bit of the cut. The Of course, the website gets mm -hmm. a cut from the advertisement, but the user gets a cut as well. Oh. And, um, and I guess, you know, like uh, on the browser side, uh, they also have a little feature that as, as a user, if you decide to auto contribute, it will just check 
you know, it, it will make a suggestion on uh, based on which websites you've been hanging out the most on. And, mm. and, and that's actual data because it's in the browser, but um, yeah, but the privacy like uh, features of, of Brave are, are such that no one else needs to see that data as well. Mm. You know what I mean? So like this, this is just a use case, but I feel like it's kind of yeah. parallel. Yeah. yeah. As a side note, this must be a, a fucking nightmare for the big tech. I mean, like Google people, they must hate this kind yeah. of solutions. Um, of course. And then of course, and I, I, to be honest, I've also asked myself, I, I haven't, uh, I mean, it's not uh, my preferred uh, project. I think it's an awesome one. I mean, it's an awesome one, but um, I've not dived more. But to be honest, I've also wondered, like, are they like this like you know taking away the the ads that have been actually uh, activated by someone on the website if that's even Legal. really allowed yeah you know yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean we're in the wild wild west yeah, but i are. think yeah. we have yeah. we just have to think that we're like in the 90s for internet mm -hmm. uh, end of 90s maybe mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. you know so there's long ways to go mm -hmm. Uh, but I think the sky is the limit. Mm. Yeah. And I've been there, you know. <laughs> I remember my first website, yeah. you know, 1997, <laughs> Notepad, you know. But yeah, um, no. But but it's it, it's it's really exciting. And and the, the thing is that that it, what excites me apart from everything else is the fact that, you know, the um, the the industry has been it, it, it's so cemented in a way, you know, b b by by yes. doing things as we've always done. We allowed companies like of course Google and Facebook and 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 Amazon for instance and and so on to to grow and prepare uh, you know to 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 a level where they become Absolutely. monopolies you know uh, and without uh, I mean you you see huge uh, accumulation of wealth in so so little hands and yeah, we, we can't yeah. we can't keep going down that road and that's why I really love I, what I've seen so far in the blockchain industry, and that's why I want to keep going this way, is of course there's also like the scammers, and mm. we, we can't say it's all like rosy, but I've seen so many of the biggest projects just being collaborative mm. and and just just saying, you know what, you've been a user, you also deserve your share mm. uh, because you are part of the value. And if you think about Facebook, what would Facebook be without its users? Exactly. And they're just being squeezed out, you know, and. Um, that's just not the way to go. So yeah, yeah. no, I, I remember because at the end of the day, the, the the only thing that Facebook does is to sell. I mean, in terms of revenues, it it, it sell ads that are highly yeah. questionable in terms of yeah. effectiveness. You know, the the mm -hmm. the, the, the entire online marketing and and uh, uh, an ads business is is highly highly questionable. Just just as an example, we recently ran a a, a, a test with Google. Google AdWords, uh, and we spent a few thousand dollars on that. And mm -hmm. when I looked at the statistics, uh, like 80% of the traffic that I got from that campaign was traffic that used keywords searches for me, for my company. You understand? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We, the user ended up with an ad and the search result, and apparently he clicked on the, on the ad and the ad click yeah. cost me money the search result wouldn't cost me money do you understand mm -hmm. so I, I was not getting anything for this because i have fairly good ceo and and you know and i don't do you know we are a very small firm we don't we don't have to have huge traffic or anything like that but but i would have gotten that traffic anyway uh, so that mm -hmm. was just a few thousand dollars th thrown out down the drain you know uh, yeah, forget absolutely. it. Uh, and there is, and, and, there, and there, there is, sorry, there, there is a story about like uh, that that a marketer told me once, uh, a critic of, of of online marketing. He said that if you have a pizzeria and and you give away uh, coupons to three guys and you ask them go on the sit to the city and 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 just give away those coupons so people come to my pizzeria to buy pizzas, right? And and mm. the story goes like one guy had a really high return rate, like because those coupons were marked with the with the guy that was giving them away you know so afterwards they mm -hmm. could count them and mm -hmm. so they asked him how did you achieve this this uh, um uh, this this high result and it, this was like a yeah get one pizza free for every purchase and he said that the only thing he did was to stand outside of the pizzeria and just give them to people that were already in the going in into the pizzeria you understand? <laughs> and so that's how he got a really high result Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's what we are doing we're just pushing people inside of a door that they are already 
coming through exactly you know, so. exactly uh just uh, just uh, one thing so you could get really excited about uh two things because i think the blockchain basically can allow us to do a better job at data uh, at big data right mm -hmm. data analysis uh, by combining a lot of chunks from from everywhere without having this centralized you know like google or facebook uh, etc there is a there is a project on that if that interests you it's called ocean protocol um and uh and then actually have all these data to do data analysis but then managed in a privacy compliant way and uh -huh. that's the that's the that's the like huge thing here that we can kind of try and it's going to take some time of course but to combine best the best of both worlds mm. um so um yeah and and um i guess crusader would know more on on all this and everything but um Cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. very exciting. So yeah, absolutely. I think for for even for businesses, there's so much, and so yeah. Yeah, you see, so so just to recap, because now you know, I said half an hour ago that we need to wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. you know, so okay, <laughs> so so I think that the, you know what we just just did today is it, it kind of encapsulates what what I really like about online collaboration. Carl is in mm -hmm. North America. Uh, you are in, in Austria, Germany somewhere, right? Austria, yeah. Yes, Austria. Fantastic country, by the way. Uh, oh, and, and I'm a Polish guy from in, in Sweden, you know, and we can ah. collaborate and, and we can we can talk to each other and mm -hmm. and, uh, and do things. That's 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 the beauty. Uh, I, you know, let's 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 uh, let's do this again. I, I would I would definitely hope that we can do this again at some point. Definitely. Um, and I'll it, try to pass by tomorrow as I can. Um, I, I, I'll see whether I can make it. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, to following your path on, on that coding and also knowing more because it, it's just uh, everything you're, you're doing and talking about is just very interesting. And so, yeah. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. And <laughs> so, so do you. you, you again, uh, I don't know if that came across in chat, but, you know, one of the, the things that the board of directors in... in uh, in Agile Ventures are appreciated was when I started to tell them how we can reboot the streaming thing uh, with, you know, the things that we, we are doing in the charity and use Twitch for it. And and I based a lot of my my insights on the things that you are doing and some other streamers, but, you know, your, oh, your, cool. your co-study co, co, co approach is, is, is an interesting one. I like that. Super cool. And I mean, if there is anything I could do on that to help you out, guys, uh, just uh, I would be so happy to contribute in a way or another. You know, you know, we, we're very so. dependent on, on, on uh, you know, people becoming members and mentioning us. You know, you have a great audience. So so uh, okay. and, and a large audience. So if there's if there's anything, uh, you know, on that Agile do, Ventures, right? AgileVentures.org. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Carl, if you were okay. interested in that, we have a... Uh, so so this is the website agileventures.org and we have here on our dashboard we have a map so these are we don't have any users in greenland apparently uh that's empty <laughs> and Paul's damn of, it i know i know we need to do something about it i wanted to go there <laughs> <laughs> oh greenland is beautiful yeah so it's part of denmark and they speak danish there so I, you know, ah, they, that's they are, true yeah, i forgot yeah, yeah. True, true. and parts of africa is also uh, you know blank spots for us but see mm -hmm. I, you know i just just cool. i gotta tell you I, I i worked with a guy from palestine right and he mm -hmm. only that was like five six years ago he only had power two day, two hours a day, you know. Mm, and what he did crazy. was, uh, for one hour of the two hours, he just he would hook up his modem or his his uh, internet connection. Uh, I think he was using a mobile connection and start up his his computer, and he, we would pair program uh, on that, cool. you know, in the occupied wow. in the, uh, the Gaza Strip, you know. And 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 he was learning to code, and and we helped him to get a a better prospect of 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 life in terms That's of so career, nice. you know? unfortunately oh we lost God. contact with him after after a uh, six seven months period or so yeah. but uh, i mean you do what you can right absolutely yeah absolutely that's awesome right cool. now so, so 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 uh, you know just take a take a look at this one become members that would be great uh and and um and then we can collaborate uh, one way or another but awesome. uh, i'll be around tomorrow 
tomorrow we'll be doing more coding than talking. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I will I will not drop I will not jump on chat so you can do more coding. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a, no but you know how it is, you know, there's always a, an interesting topic and uh, Yeah, definitely. You know, so Carl, thank awesome. you very much for joining in today. Uh, it it was very nice to 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 hear your voice and thank you for your <laughs> collaboration. Um, you helped me a lot. Uh, are, yes, will you be around enjoy. tomorrow as well? Uh, I'll try to be. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Can you say? Oh, hello. Can you, can, can you vinka? <laughs> cool. Can you vinken? Can you drink coffee, Mama? Okay. All right. Oh, that's so nice. Enjoy. Puss, puss. I'll come in five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So German and Swedish is is so sw Swedish is very hi highly influenced by. First of all, it's the same language group, but then in the 1500 and 1600, we had a very, very large uh, uh, influence of German because of the Hansa trading company, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, yeah, German is... is uh, Interesting. Yeah, um, I'm very interested in history, so don't get me started. Carl, <laughs> Anya, thank you very much for right. today. And everybody else who has been watching, it's been, a, it's been a blast. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a great coffee with the family. <laughs> thank you. I see you tomorrow, perhaps. Have a good one. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. See ya. And everyone else, thank you very much for joining in. And if you're interested in what we do at Agile Ventures, then of course, uh, check out agileventures.org. Peace out. <laughs>